Welcome back everyone, it's weather for Weather Geeks time, 19th day of October. We're heading into the final third of the month and looks pretty nice outside, especially when the weather's decent like it was today. The leaves are really popping right now. We're probably just about at our true peak for foliage. Some places even a little past peak. I, I took a look at uh, Beaver Creek uh, State Park in Columbiana County this morning and uh, it was beautiful, but some of the trees were definitely looking a little bare and some spots were getting to be past peak. But in general, as a region-wide average, I would say our, our leaves are approaching, if not right at peak right now. Now, a year ago today was not a great day to check out uh, the leaves. We had rain, but first thing in the morning in areas around and north of I-80, we had snow. And at the Youngstown Warren Airport a year ago today, we had 1.5 inches worth of snow early in the morning. And uh, it's pretty early in the season for an accumulation of that magnitude. It's not unusual to see flakes here at this time of the year, but our 30 year average date of the first measurable snowfall is in early November, November 5th, in fact. But the earliest on record of that was back in uh, 2003, October 2nd. But October 19th, way earlier than in 2021 when we waited until November 16th for the first measurable snowfall of the year at the airport. Over the next week to 10 days, the uh, Snow will not uh, be knocking on our door, that's for sure. Now, pretty good uh, swath of snow north of the U.S.-Canadian border and down into the Rocky Mountain states, but around here we're not even going to flirt with anything uh, in terms of wintry precipitation anytime real soon. We do have some frost in the forecast, though. We'll talk about that in just a moment. In the meantime, as I'm recording this video at about 10 minutes after 7 p.m., we have some light showers pushing through. Uh, another band out towards I-71, and yeah, showers are going to come and go as we head through the evening and into the overnight for tonight. When we look at the water vapor imagery across the uh, region, pretty easy to see our weather disturbance is this swirly area right there. Now this is slowing down as we speak and it's just kind of kind of park. It's going to drop anchor, if you will, over uh, say Tor Toronto and Montreal uh, for a couple of days. That's going to keep our weather pretty unsettled as colder air starts filtering in on the backside of that area of low pressure. So again, future radar for tonight, showers, Coming and going for most of us, heading out the door for Friday morning. I think there will be at least a couple of showers around. After this, though, I'm expecting, you know, not much to happen for mid to late morning, early afternoon on our Friday. Now, in time for high school football Friday evening, a little bit of an uptick in those scattered showers late in the afternoon into the evening means grab the wet weather gear. Not expecting any thunder and lightning, but for the final Friday of the regular season, what a couple of years we've had for high school football weather. Not a drop last year, hardly a drop this year. That can change, though, tomorrow evening with at least a chance of scattered showers for our games Friday evening. Temperatures in the 50s. So, uh, showers coming and going with a long, dry interval for our Friday. And I think Saturday may play out in kind of a similar fashion as we go into the start of the weekend. I'll back this up to about daybreak. Uh, there could be a shower or a sprinkle around early. The sun may try to break out in some spots, especially south and west of Youngstown, during the midday and afternoon on Saturday. Not expecting much wet weather at all around lunchtime on Saturday into the early afternoon. Should be in pretty decent shape for the YSU home game at 2 p.m. on Saturday. But this next disturbance in the flow rotates down, and I think shower chances will increase again towards dark Saturday evening. Towards about dinner time into the early evening, some showers around. But then as we go into the day Sunday, that disturbance is long gone. And aside from a sprinkle, uh, we should be precipitation free starting mid-morning on Sunday and taking us into the afternoon. And there's our friend high pressure, which will start to build in. And that's what gives us nice weather for a lot of next week, but it's going to also clear the sky out and make it awfully cold for a couple of mornings early on next week. Weekend temperatures, though, 55 on Saturday and no higher than about 50 on Sunday. But check out the low temperature Sunday night. We've dropped our low to 34. It looks like the sky will clear quick and the, the wind will slacken off quickly, and that's a recipe for cold temperatures. So no doubt there's going to be frost advisories out um, for much of the region issued by the National Weather Service at some point on Sunday. The chances of a freeze, 32 or lower, not real high locally. Now, in some of the colder traditional sheltered valleys, the colder nooks, yeah, I think there's probably going to be some sub-32 readings, but that will be an exception. Most of us probably won't drop below 32 Monday morning. But in some parts of Ohio, in western PA, uh, sub-32 degree reading, a little more likely. But at the very least, heavy frost. Uh, so if you have hanging baskets still that you want to keep around a little while longer, especially with the nice weather we have coming next week, um, you know, it's a good idea to bring them in or cover them up or take care of them before you go to bed Sunday night. Temperatures at daybreak on Monday, again, on average, about 33 to 35, 36 across our area. Now, Tuesday morning, 
is looking a little bit less cold now, and that's because what we call warm advection will start a little bit sooner. In other words, that high shifts off to the east a little bit faster, and the, the wind flow comes back around to eventually the south and then the west a little bit faster. In addition to that, by daybreak on Tuesday, a little band of cirrus clouds will probably be trying to drift overhead. So bottom line, it's probably not going to get as cold Tuesday morning now as Monday morning. You know, a couple of days ago we were talking about Tuesday morning being the cold morning, but now it looks like it's going to be Monday morning with Tuesday morning cold, but probably not cold uh, enough to flirt with a freeze and any frost probably is not as widespread or as thick Tuesday morning as compared to Monday morning. Quick look at the longer range. I think it's going to warm up nicely middle of next week, even flirting with 70 for a couple of days middle of next week. But beyond middle of next week, this will be a colder pattern emerging at the very end of October and the very start of November. This period covers October 27th to November 2nd. The residual oranges here on the map, uh, due to the front end of that seven day or six day range being pretty mild. But I think everywhere east of the Rockies, as we go towards Halloween in the first couple of days of November, it looks pretty chilly. Uh, we're probably going to spend some time with highs in the 40s right at the end of the month. But I am expecting a change beyond the first couple of days of November. And speaking of November, let's take a look at uh, the Climate Prediction Center's initial November outlook, which they issued today. This is the temperature forecast issued for November by the Climate Prediction Center. And, you know, I'll tell you, I don't have a, a quarrel with the look of the map around here in this area, the south. And in the western U.S., it's going to start out warm in early November. But I think as the month progresses, we're going to get back into a pattern that features more warmth in the east and cool weather out west. And so I think with their late month adjustment to this map, I think you're going to see more orange painted in the eastern U.S. And I do think November will be warmer than average around here. And I think you'll see some of the orange maybe trimmed in the western U.S. That's my suspicion when they update this same forecast product in about 10 days. Personally, if I were drawing this uh, myself today, I probably would have included more of the eastern U.S in a warmer than average look for November. I have less of a quarrel with their precipitation outlook. I think this is reasonable, showing above average precipitation favored along the Gulf Coast, below average precipitation in the upper Midwest and near the, near the US Canadian border. And this is kind of a reflection of the emerging El Nino. This is kind of a classic El Nino look to the precipitation map when we look at, you know, kind of sub seasonal scale forecasts. In other words, kind of month or three month forecasts. Um, you know, this map is kind of El Nino-ish with a you know, active southern uh, or subtropical jet down here and less active weather near the U.S. Canadian border. We could probably expect some of that same kind of an idea to translate or, or continue into the winter season. Don't forget my annual winter forecast is coming up in just a few weeks, uh, probably three weeks from today, in fact. I think the date is November the 9th. We'll do a full, long, geeky, detailed version here online on YouTube, all my, all my social medias. I'll do a blog version for those who are more uh, you know, prone to read things in addition to the videos. And of course, we'll do a short to the point version on our uh, evening newscasts when I'm limited by time, of course. So that you can look forward to that three weeks from tonight, more than likely, uh, November the 9th. So in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. Enjoy your Friday. I'll see you back here on Monday for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.